One thing that happens often in the study of anatomy is we, we put things in boxes. We're trying to organize our thoughts around the human form, which is a very complicated thing. And so we pick boxes to put regions of the body in or aspects of different systems, the systems themselves being boxes. And sometimes we can mislead ourselves with our boxes. A case in point might be the division of the peripheral nervous system, meaning the nerves processing out beyond the central column of the spinal, uh, spinal cord in the brain. So the peripheral nervous system into the categories of somatic and autonomic. Now, if you go into a lesson on the web or something and start studying these two categories, there'll be an effort to somehow justify or describe the labels of the boxes of somatic and autonomic. Now, the autonomic nervous system, if we were going to use that category, would include for some the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous systems and for others, it would also include the enteric nervous system. So autonomic would include parasympathetic, sympathetic, and enteric. Whereas the somatic nervous system would be meant to include the sort of musculoskeletal responsiveness, the, the, the body movements at large, as opposed to say the visceral movements. So musculoskeletal movements versus visceral movements might be one way to describe the difference between the somatic and the autonomic nervous system. I'm not so sure about that. When I'm moving my, <laughs> my arms <laughs> or my legs around, I'm getting all flush and excited. That's autonomics and body movements happening together. They're always happening together. I can't move my arm without moving the heart of my arm and the brain of my arm that are traveling through this region of my body, right? So musculoskeletal versus visceral movements, it's an attempt to describe the difference between the autonomic and the somatic nervous system. It doesn't necessarily hold. What about this idea, conscious versus unconscious? It's another way that I've seen uh, folks attempt to differentiate the somatic versus the autonomic nervous system. Now, I'm very conscious when my stomach is growling <laughs> or when I'm embarrassed and my face is flushed. And I'm not so sure uh, that I'm always conscious of my movements. I'm always waving my hands around and doing weird things with my faces. <laughs> my face, I guarantee you, I edit myself. And if you watch my face while I talk, it's going like a rubber band in all kinds of different directions. And you might say those are conscious movements, but they're really not. They're musculoskeletal movements, but they're quite unconscious. So I'm not sure that that distinction holds as a way of differentiating the autonomic versus the somatic either. What about voluntary versus involuntary? This one I see a lot too. They say that the, the, the kind of the visceral movements are involuntary and the musculoskeletal are voluntary. That one breaks down right away and even in the studies of this is, you know, I can voluntary meaning willful, right? Will, I can willfully extend my arm, but if I willfully extend my arm accidentally towards something that's very hot, I will very involuntarily <laughs> and reflexively uh, pull my arm back through a spinal reflex that's categorized within the somatic um, box, but isn't exactly a voluntary movement. And then to say that my, my movements are involuntary in terms of the autonomic responses, well, I can choose to stare at a bright light <laughs> and make my pupils contract, or I can choose not to stare at a bright light and intentionally uh, look off into the shadows and allow my pupils to dilate. So I think there's some risk actually in this particular uh, set of differentiations of these two boxes, because we might imagine that we have no power or conscious control or ability really to participate in the functions of the autonomic nervous system in a meaningful way, when in fact all I have to do is change what I'm thinking about or 
and and the feelings that arise when I think about a certain things, I can make myself very agitated and put myself into fight or flight thinking about some things, and I can put myself thinking about other things into a state of relaxation and calm, and all of the uh, emotions, one way or another, these things are functions of the autonomic nervous system at a level, and yet I can consciously orient myself or lean into things that trigger my autonomic nervous system or that, uh, or that relax my autonomic nervous system in quite a voluntary way. And the ongoing effects of my ability to self-regulate in relationship to the autonomic nervous system are huge in terms of your ability to manage your own health and place in the world. So if I'm going to sum that up, it would be to say that although we, in our attempt to organize you know, our thoughts around a very complex thing, the nervous system of the human body and its peripheral aspect might you know, generate these boxes, I wouldn't take them too seriously because no matter how you try and uh, distinguish the two, you end up having them overlap and be in relationship in a way that we are really more active participants in the entirety of our nervous system functions than we might imagine otherwise if we drew too strict a line down between these two things, which are actually integrated aspects of a whole phenomenon. So those are my thoughts on that. Uh, I don't know, hopefully it'll provoke, a, at the very least, a discussion. I'm trying to step on, I'm not trying to step on our need to make distinctions, but to heighten our consciousness around those distinctions so that we don't sort of fall for them as reality. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.